Hi everyone. Well, I'm trying out the FSPS uh, Flight Simulator Platform Solutions a new little piece of software called FSX Fiber Accelerator which, uh, let me scroll, let me pull up Sim Market here and kind of scroll down but in their words uh, it says here, is here a first time we directly in real time dynamically insert FSX tweaks without touching FSX config. Using revolutionary techniques we draw power from where you don't need it, uh, like graphics that are 80 miles away and bring you the power uh, to increase your frame rates, basically is what they're saying. So, let's see if this actually works. I've got my plane. Oh, great. And we're getting radio traffic, of course. Let's see if I can change that. All right. Uh, it's always something, right? But you can see right here, I'm loaded up uh, 737 PMDG at KSEA, or Seattle, in a thunderstorm. And I, you can see right up here I'm getting about 14 to 17, sometimes 19 frames a second. This is where I get a pretty hard hit, usually, in a PMDG in a thunderstorm at Seattle. And what you do is uh, FSPS, I should mention this, has a demo that you can use if you go to... Uh, you can see I'm at SimMarket. If you go to SimMarket.com and pull up this uh, FSPS Fiber, FSX Fiber Accelerator, scroll down and read the text. Right here you can download a demo that says we can get five single uses of the application for five minutes each. I actually downloaded the demo and got five single uses of 60 minutes each. So I'm not sure which is correct, but you can try going to Sim Market, taking a look at it, and try the demo. See if it works on your computer. <clears throat> so the first thing you do after loading it up is go into your uh, your options and display and pick your top frame rate that you want to hit and they said make it high I have mine set at 45 let's say maybe 50 and this is where the, the fiber accelerator is going to try and hit if it's not working too hard at producing frame rates for you so let's try a target of 51 frames a second and then it says to fire up the fiber accelerator. So I double clicked it and it should be popping up here shortly. Here it is. Okay, now you can see we got stuff going on here already. This sets your lowest frame rates that you want to achieve, this little slider, and then you're setting in FSX uh, sets uh, your maximum frame rates that you want to hit. Now it says that the fiber accelerator may change this target frame rate. See, it's set it for unlimited for some reason, so I'm just going to leave that. And let's say the minimum that we want to get is about, let's say, 24, 25. So we're going to set our lower frame rates at 24. And this graph right here is showing us 24, the little black line, is our minimum we want to hit. The red line is the maximum we want to hit. And so you can tell already that I've gone from 14 frames a second and see it's hitting uh, 25 once in a while it hits pegs up to 30 
so it's already improved my frame rates by my minimum and what these other graphs are telling you the frames per second line is uh, the visible apart from the obvious uh, black vertical bar show the lower frame rate so it's pretty self-explanatory the CPU terrain power representation is the real-time updated graph represents what FSX Fiber Accelerator guides FSX to do while graphic loading. The lower the value this you see, the better, better frames you will get as FSX will focus on providing better frame rates and graphical motion smoothness. The higher the value FSX will be focusing on displaying richer graphics, sacrificing inevitably some frames for that. So that's what this is telling you. If you see this black indicator low down here, that means it's working to give you better frame rates. If, you're, if FSX and your computer are finding it easy to produce your 24 frames a second, then this graph, this black line, is going to start coming up here into the 60, 80, and 100 percent and start giving you better graphics because it's finding it easy to, to uh, produce the frame rates, if that makes sense. And I still don't quite understand this video KB override. It explains it here. It says it represents the amount of graphics data that are sent directly to the GPU instead of the CPU. So it's sending it to the video card instead of the processor. Uh, explains a little more of it, which doesn't make any sense to me. But what I found is, is when I slide my frame rates down saying, well, it don't work so hard. Give me better graphics instead of frame rates. The CPU and the video override both will go up. Let me change this to 18 frames a second and watch what happens to those graphs. All right, you can see that KB override went all the way to 2048 and my CPU train power is up to about 60 now. So it's saying, uh, it's easy for me to produce 18 frames a second. Now I'm going to focus on uh, giving you better graphics. So I found that this thing, uh, I flew around some, this thing really works and it does a really nice job. I wasn't expecting much. And uh, let's try going to about something maybe unreasonable. Let's try 35 frames a second and uh, just to see if it can do it here at Seattle on the ground. It may be able to, may not, with the hardware that I have. Yeah, it looks like it can't quite, can't quite make it. So it's limited by your hardware, you know, your processor, your graphics card, whatever. But, well, see, it's pegging up there a lot better than it was. It's a lot better than the 14 and 17 that I was getting before I fired this up. So I'm so far I'm pretty impressed, but that's how it works. There's uh, this is the only adjustment is the lower frame rate setting. The rest of it is uh, is up to the program. So that's how that works. That's what I've been able to find out about it so far. I just got it today. I thought some of you might be. Uh, interested in how this thing works. Uh, I'll see ya.